Uh, hi, I'm going to teach you really quickly how to make herbal salves. Uh, we'll start with the, the obvious first question, what actually is a salve? Also, if you're freaking out and going, I thought that word was pronounced salve. It is um, in, in the UK and parts of the US, but uh, salve is also an acceptable pronunciation. Um, you have probably used uh, a commercial salve. Uh, it may have been so sold as a balm or an ointment. There is no technical definition difference between those terms. Um, if there were one, it would be that ointments tend to be thinner and uh, salves are kind of in the middle and balms are the thickest, but even just on this screen, there's a lot of variation and th that rule is broken. Um, the only really the only one here that would really make other herbalists angry probably is my inclusion of VapoRub, um, but I'm correct. It is also a salve. Um, if you make your own salve, um, I suppose any salve is the formal definition, uh, a topical preparation used to heal a localized condition. Just means it's something you put on your skin to help solve some sort of problem. Um, when you make them at home, uh, obviously the commercial ones have a bunch of different product, products. Uh, they might have um, petroleum jelly, they might have whatever, but when you make it at home, you're going to use an, an herb infused oil, some sort of wax, usually beeswax. Um, for the vegans, carnauba wax does work, but it's not a one-to-one -one with beeswax. I can give you a link to a recipe that uses uh, vegan wax if you if that is a concern for you. If you are not vegan, use beeswax. It is the best possible wax for this use. Um, and usually you'll also add some essential oil. We're going to do this in six steps. Um, the first step is you mix dried herbs. I'm emphasizing the word dried here and oil. Um, the reason we don't use fresh herbs, uh, th there are certain herbs that have to be done, have to be infused fresh. When I need those oils, I just buy the oils put together by professionals. It is so fiddly and so hard and it is not for beginners to try to do. Um, and I include myself. Um, until you're very, very experienced, just stick with dried herbs and oil, please. Um, you're going to, I say a jar with a tight fitting lid, but it doesn't matter how tight fitting the lid is, it's going to leak a little bit. Um, oil is just amazing like that. Uh, you can use pretty much any oil that is um, liquid at room temperature and safe to put on the skin. Olive oil is really, really popular with herbalists. I prefer fractionated coconut oil because it's clear so I can see the colors of the herbs as they infuse, which I just, I like. Um, and it doesn't have that, that olive smell. Um, but you can be fancy, you can use jojoba oil, you can use almond oil, go wild. Um, optionally, you might want a scale. People have been doing this forever. This used to be just a thing that everyone did in their house, right? So uh, for all of this, there are two methods. There are the folk method, and the measure, the like formally measured fancy method. Um, and I'm going to emphasize the folk method here because it's easy and um, the fastest to talk about. Um, but I do include the, the uh, more formal method for the, for the folks who just need to measure things. I understand you and I appreciate you. Um, the, the folk method though, you throw your dried herbs into a jar and leave an inch of clearance. And then you fill your jar with oil. Um, strong advice that I should have put on the slide and didn't label that. Label the date, <laughs> label what's in it, uh, what the herb is or mixture if, the, if you're going really wild um, and what kind of oil. Um, if, you're, if you can see my camera, I've got one that I've had infusing for too long. Um, it's from 2018. It's probably not good anymore. Um, but if I didn't label it, I would have no idea. Step two is really easy. You just put your jar into a sunny windowsill, or if it's winter, I like to put mine in front of a heat vent. 
um, and you let it sit and you admire your beautiful herbs in a jar and feel like a cool witch uh, for four to six weeks, you can rush it. If you uh, are feeling very inspired and you want to use salves as a uh, gift for winter holidays and it's the end of November, you can rush it. Um, set up a double boiler on a very, very, very low temperature, the lowest you can get it uh, for at least five hours with the herbs in the oil. What you want to avoid is letting the, well, you don't want to fry the herbs, right, certainly, but you you want to apply as little heat as you can manage because there's kind of a, a balance here that you are trying to strike between uh, fully infusing your herbs versus letting the oil go rancid, um, which heat and yeah, sunlight can do. So it's kind of a, I've never, except this, this one time when I left it in too long, I've never had the oil go rancid, but I'm told that that's a risk. Um, anyway, this is the easiest step and you get to feel super cool. Step three is to strain it. Um, you can use, I've got a whole list here. Uh, fancy people use muslin bags. That's not true. I use muslin bags and I'm not a fancy person. Um, they're really nice because you can dump the oil and the herbs in and then you can squeeze the heck out of it. And this is where, because you're using dried herbs, you can do this. Um, you just, you just want to squeeze all that oil and all that good herbal stuff right out of there as, as much as you possibly can. Um, if you don't have muslin bags or cheesecloth, that's okay. Uh, sacrifice a t-shirt that you never want to use for anything else ever again, or an old tea towel. Um, it will be stained, not just by the oil, but by the herbs. Um, let me save you some time. You're going to strain the oil into a measuring cup, uh, because knowing how much oil you have will help with the next steps. And then, this is kind of the fun part where, again, you get to feel like a cool witch. Um, you're going to use a double boiler. And big asterisk by double boiler. Don't go out and buy a fancy double boiler. You don't need that. You can use an old coffee can. I did for years. It was fine. Um, if you're going to spend money, buy a candle pouring pot. Um, they're nice because they have that pouring lip. They're designed for melting wax. Uh, you can kind of hang them over the side of a saucepan less so a crock pot, but a saucepan by that um, handle so that they don't touch the bottom. Um, if you, like me, are using an old crock pot, and a uh, fun tip for whenever it's safe to go back into thrift stores, you can usually find, for the older crock pots, you can usually find one of the kind of ceramic uh, inset things, I don't know what you call it, uh, for super cheap. And so I have one that I just use for wax. Um, if you're going to use a saucepan on the stove, that's fine. But again, if you can just, if you can find one you're just going to use for wax, it makes the cleanup a lot less stressful. Um, and then my tip for if you've got something that would otherwise touch the bottom of the pan is use jar lids in the bottom of the pan to keep it off of that heat source. The reason we use a double boiler is so we don't catch things on fire. <laughs> um, and you want, by volume, about one part beeswax to about three or four parts oil by volume, depending. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to stir it. Uh, another fun tip, um, chopsticks from Chinese takeout. Uh, just save them. If you don't eat with the chopsticks, even better, because you'll have, a, you'll have lots of them for wax projects. You can kind of pull some of your wax and oil mixture out as you go and stick it in your tin or your jar, whatever you're going to use. If you're impatient, stick that in the fridge for literally a minute. Um, and then you can test and make sure you've got the consistency the way you want it. Uh, the amount of beeswax that you use will vary a little bit based on additives. We're on to step five. Um, if you are feeling very fancy and you want to add shea butter or cocoa butter, really any plant butter, you can, you will use less wax. Um, it's not a one-to-one. -one. This is this is where you're very much fiddling with it and it's very much a personal opinion and it varies over time. I could give you my exact recipe and you're still going to have to mess with it. So um, a lot of this is just kind of doing this, <clears throat> doing this by feel. Um, 
you've used lip balms before, if nothing else, right? So you have some idea of, of what consistency you want. And if you mess up the consistency, you can just remelt it and mess with it again. That's the best part. Um, the plant butters you will add while it's in the double boiler. These other additives that I have listed are after it's off the heat. Um, most people add essential oils. I don't have time for the essential oil safety talk. Um, that could be its own 15 minute talk or, or longer. Uh, so please do me a favor and you want five to 10 drops per ounce of salve. Or if you don't wanna do that math, you could do six to 11 drops per ounce of oil that you started with. And you know your number of ounces of oil because you, you put it in a measuring cup. Um, don't use more than that unless it's an oil you're really sure of. It's so easy to poison yourself with essential oils. I will, I will stop there, but please follow that guideline. Uh, camphor, which you can get as an essential oil, that's how I get it, but you can also get it uh, as crystals or, or menthol. Uh, you can use up to a gram per ounce of salve. Um, activated in char charcoal and bentonite clay, I'll talk about why you might use those, but it's two tablespoons per cup of oil. And if you were going to spend money on a second thing, uh, vitamin E oil is the other thing I would recommend because you want your salves to last. It's hard to make just, you know, one tin of salve. Um, you're going to end up making more than you think you need. Uh, vitamin E oil will help it last longer. Without that, um, it, it may not even last a year. And we're looking at about a half teaspoon per cup of oil. Uh, the other thing you can add as, an, as, as a preservative is rosemary essential oil does have some preservative properties as well. You'll notice it's in all of my recipes. Um, yes. And then literally you can put it in anything. Um, you can put it in an Altoid tin, baby food jars, whatever. My one note about this is um, if you're going to throw it in your bag, especially in the summer, make sure you have a screw top, like a, a thing that seals really well. Um, that's probably obvious, but uh, it's, a, it's a mistake people have made. If you're going to buy special tins or jars, please do me a favor, and I'm not gonna shame this company, but um, these pull-off ones, one, they're not entirely safe to throw in your bag, and two, they're hard on people with arthritis. Spend just a little bit of extra money and get ones that screw open and closed. Um, please, thank you. Uh, yeah, that was all I wanted to say about that. Reusing tins is a beautiful thing. Uh, this, this is actually a photo of four different salves I've made, um, three of which I'm giving you uh, the ingredients for, if not the full recipe. Um, so if you have sore joints or sore muscles, or in fact, also menstrual pain, I kid you not, this actually works for me. Um, you can just rub a salve on your stomach and actually helps with menstrual pain. I didn't believe it until I tried it. Um, ginger, cayenne, peppermint, and rosemary. Uh, the ginger, the cayenne, and usually the peppermint, I do infuse in oil. Um, in terms of essential oils, I do add a little bit of ginger, a little bit of peppermint, and of course, rosemary. Uh, you could also add turmeric that will, that will uh, stain your skin. Eucalyptus would be nice. Uh, now I have to fly because we're close to the end. Um, German chamomile is nice for both muscle pain, well, for muscle pain and menstrual pain, which I guess is also muscle pain. Uh, careful with it, some people like me, are allergic to it, which is why I don't use it, but it would be a really nice addition to that. Headache pain, uh, lavender, peppermint, and rosemary. You could add eucalyptus as well, that would be nice. Um, and I infuse all three and also add all three as essential oils. Um, if I had to pick a favorite salve, this is, this is the one, I love it. Um, what we call a drawing salve. This is the one where you would use the, char the activated charcoal and the bentonite clay. Um, plantain is not, not the banana relative. There is a, I guarantee you've got plantain in your yard, but you can also buy it. Um, infuse plantain oil and then 
add these other things and it will actually help with bee stings. Uh, if, don't use this instead of getting treatment if you're allergic. Um, for plant stings, for uh, it even helps with splinters. Um, it's a really useful salve. And then really quickly, I have links to other people's directions uh, written out because I know not everybody learns best from videos. Um, here are two books. The Botanical Skincare Recipe Book is just full of recipes uh, and not that much lore, whereas Wild Remedies is mostly lore but also has recipes. Um, and you may or may not like the fact that the Botanical Skincare Book is all in that font. It all looks handwritten. Uh, I do have image credits, sorry that they're so fast, and I'm all done, only a minute over. Thank you everyone, um, and thank you for your patience.